Okay, it's going to be a review of WWF In Your House, Good Friends, Better Enemies, which is a title that uh, they stole from Ring of Honor's uh, Bitter Friends, Stiffer Enemies. But uh, yeah, man, I, I love this pay-per-view. This was definitely, um, you know, this definitely takes you into the heart of the uh, 1996 with the In Your House uh, pay-per-view format. This is Shawn Michaels' first uh, title defense. So the pressure was uh, definitely on him. And in a lot of ways, I do feel like this this main event was very important uh, in, in terms of getting the company uh, into the Attitude Era and, uh, you know, kind of setting, you know, kind, kind of um, the departing of Kevin Nash, you know, leaving Shawn Michaels as the champion. It, it's almost like, uh, you know, the, the Monday Night Wars were uh, fully uh, on the way to uh, happening at this time. So uh, we're going all the way back to April 28th, 1996 from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, the Omaha Civic Auditorium. This is the biggest, at the time, this was the biggest gate in the history of uh, Omaha. They did 120,000 at the gate, which was pretty good for that time. But, you know, as the company got more successful, um, you know, they, they would start running in uh, bigger arenas. So, um, you know, Omaha was definitely ideal, I think, for In Your House, Middle America uh, at that time. The attendance was 9,563. Uh, uh, the pay-per-view buy rate, um, they don't have an exact number here, but if, if you Google it, the, the number that uh, appears the most realistic is 150000 which is pretty good. I think for In Your House um, in 1996, what was good, it's a lot higher than, um, you know, the Davy Boy Smith um, Beware of Dog in Your House, and it's also a lot higher than uh, uh, the last In Your House of the Year. Uh, featuring Bret Hart and Psycho Sid for the title, so uh, so yeah, I, I would definitely say this is um, this was definitely one of the more uh, successful, uh, you know, in your house pay per views, uh, no doubt about it. So let let's get right down to it. This is one of these. This is a short pay per view, so if you want to watch this on the network, it's only about a hundred minutes. It's, it's a one hour and forty two minutes to be exact. And we start off with what was supposed to be the British Bulldog taking on Jake the Snake Roberts in a rematch from uh, Germany. Um, this ended up being a tag match. Uh, Jim Cornette gets freaked out by the Snake, uh, but he leaves his ten tennis racket at ringside. So we get Owen Hart and British Bulldog, um, you know, probably teaming up for one of the first times uh, at this time to take on uh, Jake the Snake Roberts and Ahmed Johnson. I, I don't know why uh, Ahmed and Jake teamed up. Uh, I think they teamed up at WrestleMania, so this made sense. And at the same time, they wanted Jake to learn, not Jake, but uh, Ahmed to learn from someone as decorated and as experienced as Jake the Snake Roberts. I mean, even Austin would agree, you know, if you want to learn how to work, uh, watch Jake the Snake Roberts. So that definitely makes sense because, you know, Ahmed had a reputation of, uh, you know, being physically uh, dominating, but a little bit reckless. So... Uh, yeah, I, I like this match, though. I thought this got off to a good start. Jake was really overselling. He he did not look healthy. You know, you could see the gut hanging out. He he looked a little bit old. He looked worn down. But it's not like the fans didn't get behind The fans definitely got behind him. So it, it, it almost had like a Terry Funk and ECW type of feel uh, with Jake here. I'll tell you, when Ahmed got the hot tag, uh, Vince got erected. I mean, he started going crazy. Uh, this is some of the most passionate commentary I've heard from Vince uh, throughout this whole, you know, throughout this whole show, I thought he was great. But, you know, you definitely got the feeling like he really wanted to pull the trigger and, and push Ahmed Johnson. You know, I, you know, I, I think I think over the year, Ahmed had some really, really, um, you know, he, he went through a lot, you know, uh, no doubt about it with injuries. And just I, I think there was other guys that really, you know, didn't want to see him get pushed. But the hot tag to Ahmed uh, was crazy. So uh, obviously, British Bulldog is going to get the title shot against Sean at, at the next in your house. So. You see what's coming here. So I think it was Owen. He pulls Ahmed out of the ring. The referee is distracted. That opens the door for, for Davey, Davey Boy Smith, to hit uh, Jake with uh, Jim Cornette's tennis racket. And then he kind of puts him in a kind of a, a modified version of Lance Storm's uh, half crab and uh, makes, him, makes him tap out without even rotating him. So interesting finish there. Uh, British Bulldog would go on to... Uh, you know, really get involved in a very um, soap opera driven storyline with Shawn Michaels. Uh, so uh, good victory for him there. And we move on to the Ultimate Warrior uh, taking on Goldust. Uh, they come out. So Goldust comes out with Marlena, who's smoking the cigar like like a like a chimney. 
and uh, Bodyguard, who's actually Mantar. The Bodyguard kind of reminded me of Brodus Clay, like from a physique standpoint, but it was actually the Mantar uh, that was the Bodyguard here. So this is for the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, the match never really got going. This ended up being more of a segment. It, it, it was funny. I mean, it, it kind of reminded me of... You know, some of the stuff that Warrior did with Papa Shango, just just one of the more forgettable things that Warrior had ever done. Um, I, I got pretty vivid memories of this. This this was really like the first pay-per-view I think my brother ordered. Uh, you know, he was a huge Shawn Michaels fan, so it would definitely be, make sense that he ordered this show. And I, I, I remember just putting on the, the pay-per-view and just seeing uh, Marlena just blow that smoke in Ultimate Warrior's face. So ended up being more of a segment. Goldust had an injured uh, knee that was all wrapped up here. It just featured Warrior, um, you know, blowing smoke at both of them. And eventually, I think he tried to burn it in Goldust's hand. And then th there was a part where Warrior went into his routine Um you know, with the clotheslines and the shoulder blocks, but ultimately Goldust just walked to the back and then Warrior just beat the crap out of uh, the bodyguard. And uh, that was pretty much it. So it was more of a segment. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the Warrior push in 96, I, I think it was very forgettable. But um, I, I will admit, though, I, I, I think after WrestleMania, a lot of people wanted to tune into Raw uh, from a curiosity standpoint, and I was definitely one of them too, because Warrior was my guy, like in 1991 when I was a kid. So I, I, I definitely remember uh, tuning in the Raw, like specifically, just to you know see the Ultimate Warrior again. Uh, I, I thought he looked in great shape, but it, it just seemed like something was definitely lacking here um, f from Ultimate Warrior. I, I, I do not know what it was, but, uh, but yeah. All right, next up we got Vader. Uh, take, Vader coming out there with Jim Cornette to take on Razor Ramon. So, yeah, the, the, this had to be Razor's last uh, appearance. I, I thought it was at the February pay-per-view, but, um, you know, Razor was not at WrestleMania 12, and it's kind of baffling to me. Like, is there, was there a reason as to why Razor Ramon, Scott Hall, was not at WrestleMania 12, even though he was on the poster? Um you know, you would think you, you would have put him in something, but um, I, I think, you know, he, he probably committed to WCW before uh, Kevin Nash did, but I, I can't, f I mean, if, if you had, uh, you know, Scott Hall under co contract for WrestleMania, you would have thought, you know, at least put him in something. So it's just a little bit weird how he wasn't at WrestleMania, but he's on this show and the match with Vader was good. Um, you know, the positive side effect of Razor leaving is you got a heel going over with a clean finish, which you rarely get. And it's, it's almost like the fans didn't really know how to react. I thought the match was good, uh, but, you know, you, you could definitely tell that um, it was just designed to make Vader look good. Vader dominated the match. Uh, Razor did a lot of selling. Um, it, 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 it was interesting, though, man. Like, like Razor's knee gave out on the Razor's edge. I thought that was cool. Razor actually busted out an electric chair on Vader. Uh, so yeah, I mean, he, he took, I mean, this is a pretty risky match considering he's on the verge of getting this big money contract and he's, he's in the ring with someone as reckless and as, um, you know, strong as Vader. So, uh, kudos to Razor Ramon. I, I thought the match was really, really good. It, it kind of had a dark finish though, with the fans just being a little bit shocked after Razor's knee gives out on the Razor's edge, uh, Vader just kind of gives him like a scoop, like a hip slam or a scoop slam. And that's pretty much how it ends. But, you know, you, you need to build up Vader. Um, you know, he's getting the title shot at SummerSlam. So uh, it makes a lot of sense. You know, so Razor kind of, um, you know, gives in to the time-honored tradition and, you know, puts someone over on the way out. Um, I was going to say this. Like, it's... Like when you when you look back at this match right here, like knowing everything you know, especially like with the stuff that happened in TNA with Scott Hall, it's almost like amazing that Razor even showed up for this match. Like, why would he show up? What's the incentive? Well, I I just think the incentive was if if he didn't show up, he wouldn't have gotten paid. It's a pay per view. There's still a lot of money at stake. He probably ended up getting, you know, I, I would think at least a couple of thousand, you know, just for wrestling. You know, this match with Vader right here. So uh, the match was good. That, that it was probably the second best match on the show. Uh, all right, next up, we got the Tag Team Championship match. We got the Body Donnas with Skip and Zip with Sonny defending the belts against the Godwins. 
I thought the match was fun. I, I, I thought it was good. Um, you know, obviously, Chris Candido is out there. This was this was like the last feel-good moment I think Sonny had with the body Donis before, you know, it got a little bit overbooked and a little bit crazy. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, some people are going to find the Godwins. You know, they're not the cool kids at school, so the match isn't for everybody. But but what this really did was it was great uh, character development for Sonny. I, I, I think at that time... Uh, especially when you go back to the 90s, you know, to, to have the hot girl being disgusted by the, you know, hairy, smelly pigs. It's just something that went on, you know, back at that time, you know, whether you're going to school or whether you were hanging out at the mall. I, I, I mean, Sonny really kind of captured, you know, that uh, that feeling. And I, I think the Godwins complimented her uh, very, very well. But, uh, you know, the, the, the match is cool. I, I think Chris watching this match, Chris Candido was a hell of a talent. Like, he, he really bumped really good for the Godwins. I thought the Godwins looked dominant. But the storyline here was that Sonny, um, Sonny was trying to manipulate one of the Godwins. Um, I, I think, I can't remember which one it was. But one of them was crazy about Sonny and was, like, kind of, you know, mesmerized by her. So she, she gave, um, they had this photo, this framed photo with Sonny. Uh, calling one of the Godwins pig. He said, two pig, love Sonny, and then the, the Godwin got distracted by it. Ultimately, it ended up in the Godwin bucket, and uh, the body donors were able to take advantage of the distraction and, um, you know, get the victory there by a, by a, by a small package. And uh, we move on from there. Next up, we have the main event. This is what we're all here for. So uh, this is the no-holds-barred match for the WWF title. This is the rematch from uh, the WrestleMania 11, uh, entertaining but very um, chaotic, not the main event championship match between Shawn Michaels and uh, and Diesel. So at, the dynamics are totally different here. You got Shawn Michaels as a babyface, as the champion, uh, taking on Diesel, who is free as a bird. He's on the way out. He's on the way to WCW. He's bringing attitude and really kind of changing the business at this time I, I would say this this diesel heel turn from the match with Bretta survivor series until this you know good friends better enemies match it's it, it's got to be you know the, the 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 best run you know kevin nash had um of his career I, obviously you want to give him credit for the nwo and all that stuff but but god damn i mean he really deserves so much credit, and Sean does as well, for, for really, you know, changing certain things about the business. And it really feels like Survivor Series 95, like a lot of things kind of came to an end. You know, he even talked about this in the alternate commentary with Sean, that, um, you know, they, they were trying to compete with Disney at the time. They had... Um, I, I think Sean even mentioned the ladder match of Razor had to be really watered down. They couldn't hit anybody with a weapon. It was just the agreement that they had with some of the toy figure companies. It seemed like a lot of that went away, you know, leading up to this match. So this is no holds barred. I think they wanted to go in this direction to make Sean more of a fighter. Maybe make it, it this probably would have been a little bit more believable if Sean is able to have the full arsenal of weapons. Um, so it was good, man. It, it was great stuff. Uh, it's the blow off to Deshaun and Diesel feud. You know, Diesel was acting like he could get away with everything. And he was even taking shots at Vince. So really, th this is really like the first time where Vince became, you know, more than just a commentator. He was even saying, McMahon, I got something for you out there. And after this is over, I'm going to get you, Vince. So it, it, it's almost like Vince was like playing Mickey, um, for Shawn Michaels here. Like there, there was, even after the jackknife through the table, Vince is like, let it be over, damn it. Let it be over. Let it be over. So I, I thought Vince would, Vince showed great emotion here. And uh, Shawn, you know, obviously he's wrestling a bigger guy. He's got to show that emotion. But I, I think because he had so much pressure on him, this is really like his first major title defense. So when you see, see Shawn come out to the ring, just he has a look of extreme focus, extreme laser just you know focus and um he just he just looks like he's ready um you know he, he he basically has a look on his face like if he doesn't deliver here he's going to jail or he's gonna you know go on death row like that's the kind of sense of, sense of urgency you got from Shawn michaels uh uh for this main event right here so 
It was good, man. Uh, it was a little bit different than WrestleMania 11. Like, Sean, um, you know, bumped like crazy in the WrestleMania 11 match. Here, it, it was a little bit more methodical. It, it was a little bit more of Diesel just cutting off Sean's momentum and, and wrestling more at Diesel's pace. Diesel really kind of controlled the match. The, the Diesel was a great heel here. This is this is some of the best heel work he had ever done. Um, just, just, just ruthless stuff. I mean, when Michaels got into the ring... You saw some great punches from him, some great high flying. He actually busted out a moonsault where he actually twisted his body in midair. It ended up being more of a cross body. I, I thought that was beautiful. But then as the match progressed, it just seemed like anytime Sean uh, was building momentum, Diesel would just, you know, knock him into the guardrail. And there are so many foreign weapons. I, I, I think, you know, th th this is what this had to be one of the first times where I, like someone's actually putting their hands on a referee. So Diesel... Um, Knocks out Earl Hebner. He takes this, um, it's almost like a belt, and he starts ch choking out Sean with it. They actually use the fire extinguisher. So so Sean really makes his comeback with, um, you know, the fire extinguisher. They they actually take off, Mad Dog Vashon is in the front row, and, you know, Diesel actually takes off his uh, prosthetic leg. And Vince sells it like like Nash is the devil. Like he's like, I can't believe someone would go that low. And and Sean is able to intercept it and use it as a weapon and ultimately uh, you know knock out uh, Diesel with the super kick. But oh, oh man, it, it it was great stuff. I thought the the, the table bump uh, at the time it just it felt very refreshing. You know Nash was able to counter you know some of Sean's super kicks into some really really nice clotheslines. Um, I mean, you know, the, the, the difference between this match and WrestleMania 11 is you didn't have all the distractions. You didn't have Sean being frustrated by the photographers. The, the most frustrated Sean looked in this match, uh, he, he brought in, you know, after he used the fire extinguisher, he tried to bring in some chairs. The chairs are actually tangled up. It, it looked like by Jerry Lawler's uh, headset. So you had all the wiring around the chair and Sean looked a little bit upset about it but he, he just said fucking and he just swung the chairs with the wiring around the chairs and it, it, it actually looked pretty cool looking back on it but yeah I, I like the match a lot better like, like I said he, the, the photographers uh, definitely got in Sean's way at Wrestlemania 11 and um, you know you had horny celebs and corny celebs at ringside obviously you know Pam and Tommy uh, that definitely makes uh, sense by calling them horny celebrities so you know there's a reason why they got married uh, two weeks after they met so I don't know man uh, it, it just really really felt like this was um, this was a much better match and on, on top of that you didn't have the watered down Diesel you know, D, you know Nash even talked about um, you know, leading up to this match, that he was miserable as champion. He even said he didn't even want the belt because it made him so miserable. Uh, obviously, he's on his way to WCW, and you know, they, they even talked about how, uh, you know, just he, he, Nash even referenced this m many times, you know, throughout throughout this uh, heel run that uh, he was he was a corporate puppet and he couldn't be himself and. He was miserable as the champion, so uh, it, it it was really cool. I, I don't think it, it, it's it's almost like Nash, in a way, was kind of breaking down that fourth wall of kind of going places where no one had ever went before. I, I don't know if, if if Nash talked to Vince about this and Vince was able to agree to it. You you would think like stuff like this wouldn't have been allowed until after they started getting killed in the ratings, but. It happened. It happened before, you know. Uh, Razor and, and 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 Diesel even got to uh, to Nitro, so so that's pretty cool. But uh, but yeah, uh, the, one of the more underrated things about this match is just the aftermath. Sean um, Sean is actually posing, and um, it, it looks like he takes a shot at Hogan. He does the Hogan pose. And it looks like he's talking trash to Hogan. Looks like he's talking trash to uh, Bischoff. If you read his lips, you could you could definitely see him say uh, where the big boys play. I think Nash even referenced it in some of the promos. Um, you know where the big boys play. That was actually WCW's uh, marketing slogan. I think at that time. I think when Benoit arrived, he even said it when he came out of the limousine. If anybody remembers that. Um, but yeah, they don't show it on the pay-per-view. I don't even think they show it on the DVD. Um, 
But this is the pay-per-view where Sean actually kisses Vince. And this led to ru uh, silly rumors about them being homosexuals and all that stuff, which is uh, ridiculous. But, uh, but yeah, man, I, I love the match. I, I think the dynamic was a home run this time. Uh, I think both matches are great. Uh, you know, the, the WrestleMania 11 match, it's more funny. And it's more just a, a unique situation that, than, than great. This was great, though. This is a great match. Um... I, I just think they hit a home run with the stipulation, just everything diesel on the way out. It just, it was just, it was just perfect, everything here. But I'll tell you, the WrestleMania 11 match, when, when Sean takes the photographer and just tosses him, uh, the funniest part about it is Jerry Lawler. He's like, and Sean just kind of escorting the photographer. Uh, away from ringside, and then Vince is like, "Oh, yeah, sort of, yes." Like you could just you could just hear it in Vince's voice that, you know, he was a little bit ups upset at uh, Shawn Michaels' temper tantrum. But uh, but yeah, man, this 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 was awesome stuff. Uh, really kind of set the tone uh, for Shawn Michaels' title reign. And uh, when you watch this main event, like it, th this is the kind of effort you got from Shawn. That laser focus, that determination, almost like treating every single main event like it's the main event of WrestleMania. Something to prove, um, you know, really kind of shattering uh, the shattering everything down of, uh, you know, a smaller, more athletic guy can, you know, make it believable to, to go over a monster like Diesel, like Kevin Nash. So, um, yeah, you know, it, it kind of sucked, you know, Razor Ramon and Diesel are leaving. Uh, so, and, and then on top of that, Brett is on vacation. And once you get past this pay-per-view, I think the ratings took a hit. I think the buy race definitely took a hit. Uh, you had the build guys back up, you know, Austin Foley and Triple H were coming, but at the time, you know, they, this a, a lot needed to be done. Literally, they had a lot of proving to do. Um, so yeah, to lose to lose Razor and Diesel uh, at, exactly at the same time, it had to be a huge blow. And it's funny, man. Like we didn't, you know, we obviously had America Online back then, but uh, I just remember like this girl at school. It, this was at the beginning of the school year, like in September. She was like, oh, my dad's a huge fan. And, and he found out that Razor and Diesel are, you know, thinking about signing with uh, WCW. And it's funny, like, it, it, you know, she was right. Like, it, it really did happen. Um, and I'll leave you with this. You know, the, one of the more interesting things that Nash talked about, you know, he was... He, he, it's funny, like Nash doesn't get a lot of credit for having great matches. And um But he was very like he for some reason he was really determined to go out, you know, putting over Shawn Michaels and just having a great match. Um and it's funny, he actually mentioned like Bischoff actually called him up and I, I don't I don't know what Bischoff was upset about, but it sounded to me like Nash was a little bit up or or Bischoff was a little bit upset that Nash like had this type of match or was saying the things that he was saying on the um on some of the promos. Maybe 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 the promo about WCW and, and where the big boys play. He did mention that. Maybe Bischoff maybe that rubbed Bischoff the wrong way. But um at this time, I think it was just a, a handshake agreement. There was nothing uh, written and set in stone. You, you know, we still had the the click incident happen uh, at Madison Square Garden the next month. But uh, in terms of seeing, uh, you know, Nash and, and, and Hall on a pay-per-view, you know, the, I, I believe this is pretty much it. So um, that's good friends, better enemies. Uh, definitely an awesome main event. You know, the undercard is what it is. I, I, I didn't think it was bad. I thought it was interesting. Um, you know, you got you got great uh, storyline progression with Sonny. And, and I'll tell you, the, the funny thing about Sonny, you know, it's probably the only time a manager ever, I mean, obviously there's been documentaries about Bobby the Brain Heenan. But if you go to the network, there's actually a Sonny compilation with her just as a manager. I don't think that's ever happened for a manager, like a compilation of just you know, Sonny matches because she managed, you know, multiple teams in one year. So you definitely understand that. I thought Vader, Vader and Razor is surprisingly a really good match. You know, one of the few times you see a heel going over clean uh, at this time, you know, Warrior and Goldust. It was an interesting dynamic. 
uh, especially the stuff with the the cigar smoke but ultimately it ended up being forgettable and uh obviously you, you want to tell the story of the british bulldog uh getting some momentum to get a title shot so i, I thought the opener was pretty cool so this is to to me like if you want to watch a, a definitive in your house from 1996 that captures the heart of 1996 i, I really think this will be it so hope you guys enjoy the review and i'm out all right